on track in terms of expenses. There's nothing that's standing out at this time. Um, for those, whoops, for those of you who weren't at the BOA meeting, uh, we at this, uh, on this day, actually on the 22nd, we are short our first payment by 96 or rather $98,000. At the same time last year, we were short our first payment by $133,000. So we're actually ahead in our tax collection effort this year than we were last year. And that's, um, and that's notable, I think. And the, the, the real story, I think, will present itself and when we are done with our tax collection effort on November 23rd. At that point, we will know um, much more about what our cash flow is going to look like going forward into the last half of the fiscal year. From a delinquent tax standpoint, of course, we don't have delinquent taxes yet until November 23rd, but from uh, but the delinquent tax is outstanding for 2019 as of as of the 22nd are $5,700, 578797 So we are closing in on that gap. It's very, I am very hopeful that it will all come in by the end of the tax collection effort this year. That's what the tax payers who are on that list have been advised. And I think there's a good chance Good. So well we're done. hoping for, we're, we're hoping for no tax sales um, at, on account of 2019 delinquent taxes. So we're only, we're only so we're only del the delinquencies are nine thousand fifty three dollars. Well, as of September 30th, they were nine thousand fifty three dollars. But as of Thursday the 22nd, when I made my last deposit. They were five thousand seven hundred eighty-seven dollars. Excellent. So we're closing it. We're closing in on that gap. Great. The last um, item for me, other than to answer questions from the board on the report, is that the final the final audit document is ready for presentation to the board. And uh, Fred Duplessis would be available November 9th at, if the board um, would like to meet with him at that time and accept the, the uh, audit. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll just we'll get him on the agenda for the 9th. Do we, Denise, how much, what, what do we already have? What do we already have teed up for the 9th? We have um, a possible curb cut. We have the continuation of the BOA at six before the select board meeting. Um, something from something from Alfred was a nine. Yeah, where there's something Alfred needs to get back to us with road crew plow routes. Um, right. And there's always other stuff that comes up. But so far, not not that sounds manageable. Sandra, how much time do you think we should? Or we're going to need to a lot for that half an hour 45 minutes um half an hour what i'm hoping is that they will be able to send a digital copy of that on it and the management uh, letter and, and does that then, include a, does that include a management letter typically it does yes and so if they send the digital copy of the final audit, we can forward it to the board to look at, and then it, it would be much easier and quicker when he gets there to ask questions rather than to see the document for the first time. Yes, absolutely. If we don't get it ahead of time, I don't think we can do it because we'll, we will need to have time to review it. So if you could let them know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other questions from Sandra on the September report or the um, auditors coming on November 9th? All right, then. Um, there was a financial management questionnaire that um, slipped through the cracks. We should have done it the end of June. Cliff, can you call that up? 
a sec here. Oh, there's Toby. <laughs> Probably at seven, Tony, Toby. I'm um, sorry, I had trouble trying to get into Zoom on my phone. Yeah, we already um, we already did and approved the items that you asked us to. Okay, great. Just make sure you get them to uh, CVRPC by the 31st. And who do I get the um, Better Back Roads, the Marshfield Road document to? Who does that go to? Does that go to that, um, what was her name, Christine yep. Royal? Yeah, whoever whoever sent the email is looking for the signed document. Cheryl Cheryl Dow, I guess it is. Yep. Okay. Did you have anything else, real quick, from your point? Um, the radar signs are here. Um, if we're going to put them up around town on our roads, uh, we need to get your suggestion about where you would like to have them placed in the future, so we can put some anchors in. Did we get approval from VTrans? Not yet. So we can't really do anything until we get approval, right? We can do it in town. It does, it's only on the state highway that we have to get a permit. Okay. All right. Can, well, let's, let's I, put I that on. Put, I, I plan to put one up on the county road where we had the cart and put it up right away. And But if you want other locations in town, we need to prepare for that. And you guys got to come up with a list. Okay, well, we can put that on for next agenda. Okay, don't wait too long because if the ground freezes, we won't be able to put anchors in. Yeah, but you're going to go ahead and do the one and um, where the speed cart's been in Maple Corner. That's correct. Okay. Anybody have any quick questions for Toby while he's here? Are there places, Toby, that you would recommend come to mind? Uh, no, but uh, I guess, you know, you know, I think in the past we've only put it in a couple of other places and that was due to um, uh, resident requests. Yeah, I know we've talked before about maybe having it so we could move it to by the school, but we don't have really have time to talk about that tonight. Well, it's not only the school, it's Lightning Ridge in general, because people, yeah. well, back when we used to have school in a building, they used to really motor down that road and it's the whole length of that road that gets subject to that behavior. So John, you're telling me I need to put it in front of Doug Lilly's house? <laughs> um, I think actually on the blind corners before, well before it, where, uh, what is the Tucker road intersects? I, I was just kidding. I, wherever you, wherever you guys decide it's appropriate, we'll put anchors in so we can move it around. We also need to put it around your your house there, brother, because they move up that road and create a dust storm. I've seen it. Um, yeah, do you want to come and clean my house for me? <laughs> <laughs> my hose isn't long enough. <laughs> All right. Um, and can you be check? Can you check with Vtrans on the status of those permits for East Cows? Um, no, I'm I'm waiting for them. I've already chased it. I will take care of it. It's just okay. they're in they're in the process and they move at the state speed and um, they have everything they need. And I've met with them two or three times and have emailed with them. And it's just a question of when they get their process done. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the financial management questionnaire. How do I? I'm trying to figure out. Okay. So if we could go through that, Sandra sent it to us all ahead of time. So I'm assuming everybody's had a chance to look at it. Is there any questions on what Sandra filled out? Rose? Rose, did you have a question? No, I'm trying to scroll and look at it. Oh, okay. Sharon, did you have any questions? I don't have any questions. Cliff? No questions. John? Nada. Okay, so we need to sign this. Can you scroll down? To Alfred the Larrabee. Join the meeting. Okay, so would there be a motion to authorize um, my signing off on this? So moved. 
Second. All right, we're ready to vote. Cliff. Aye. John. Aye. Uh, Sharon. Aye. Rose. Who gets this questionnaire? Where does it go? In a file. Oh. If we just maintain them, they're required by statute from the okay. state auditor office that a select board be presented with this list of internal controls. And uh, I mean, we, we get audited every year. So our internal controls are scrutinized more than this document would ask, but it's still required. Okay, sounds good. I Okay, and I'm an I. All right. Anything else, Sandra? Everything else good? Yes. Okay. So far, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed. It looks All right. Good. Computers work, this computer stuff is working okay. Connections, server, all that stuff. Yes, so far, so good. We're so far, so good. A little slow uh, yeah. between my computer and the town server, but we'll see what we can do about that. All right. Very good. Anybody else have anything for Sandra? You're welcome to say Sandra. If not, any other questions, you're welcome to go enjoy your evening. All right. I'll leave you to your work. Thank you very much. Thank you, good Sandra. Night. Good Thank night. you, Sandra. Good night. Thanks, Sandra. Okay, and I asked them the town office about any updates, and they just said election, election, election. <laughs> and I did forward to everybody. Judy received an email today from um What's his name? Tebal, our state of um, Washington County attorney, with some updates in case there are issues with things happening at the polls, people protesting or making threats. There's a whole long document, which actually was very, I thought, very well done. I read it this afternoon and forwarded it to all of you. Um, I know that they've had a record turnout of mail-in and drop-off ballots um but other than that it seems like everything is going smoothly and i know that they cannot wait for this to be over yeah i really appreciate that cardboard drop-off ballot box on the corner of uh apple hill and um <laughs> really are you really doing are you collecting the ballots john no i've been i put my ballot all my family's ballots in there and it's great i i went <laughs> back the next day i noticed it was emptied so it's they're maintaining it <laughs> All right, um, Alfred, you're up. Uh, okay, I'm here. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. How are you? Hi, Alfred. Good. Hey, did you? I asked. I had capital copy enlarge those maps. Did you get them? Uh, no. Okay, then they must still be at the town office, town office. Those... i was there today this afternoon and i nobody huh. gave them to me so okay well are, they, to... are, are you they sure they're there a... or yeah barbara um said that they had received them i thought they were going to leave them on the table for you to pick up they're Maybe blown they... up they're blown up copies of the plow roots remember everybody was having a hard time reading them yep yep Maybe, so, well, maybe I, they got delivered they made, to that box John mentioned. Well, maybe. Well, the office made me a little bit larger with the copier that they have, but maybe right. you well, made these, them bigger? Yeah, Capital Copy was able to enlarge them even more. Oh, so, okay. All right, so I'll make a note to find out, or you can check with <coughs> the town office and see where they are. I sure will. I didn't know anything about it, so I, I was there this afternoon, and I would have asked if I had known. But yeah, well, um, I thought, like I said, I, I thought they, will. like I said, I thought they were going to leave them out on the. I thought they were going to let you know and leave them out on the table. So I apologize yep. if there was okay. confusion. Okay. No, I'll I'll double check. I will ask. Okay, and um, I did talk to CBRPC about a traffic study on the county road, and we're on their schedule for. First up in 2021. Okay. And I've also contacted the sheriff and I'll be contacting Lieutenant White of the Vermont State Police to get copies of 
accident and speeding reports as we discussed at our last meeting. I said I would do that and I've done that. Yep, okay. Okay, what do you have for us? Um, not a lot. We had snow this morning. I'm assuming no. everybody noticed. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over uh, everybody's Facebook pages. Yeah. Yeah, well, lucky it wasn't enough that really didn't affect the roads much, so uh, we didn't have to go into action, but um, uh, we are ready, by the way. All of our equipment is ready to go. It's uh, plows are on, plows are, the sanders are ready. Everything's ready to go, so if it does snow, we'll be out there. Yeah, right now um, it's still raining. Yeah, no, it's we're good until the next chance is toward the end of the week, so, and that's a small chance, but uh, still, we never know, so we're we're ready. Okay, and everybody, everybody at the garage is healthy. Uh, yep, yep. I Great. do the health screening every morning, and everybody's temperature is normal, and everything is, yeah, everybody seems to be healthy. Great, good news. Um, yep. John, John, and and or Alfred, do we have any update on the wood chipper? I I have not heard a word about it. I don't. I haven't heard anything. I've not been in contact with anybody. Yeah, I I gave a brief update as last week. Right. Um, that the guys seems to be giving us a hard time now. He's. Oh, I'm glad you're on here, Alfred. I, we I just need a clarification. I I know what the answer is, but. Um, He's claiming that, and he sent a, an email, I'll forward it to you with an attached fuel sample out of the tank, and it contained gasoline and other contaminants. And he claims that it went out of his yard, working, functioning properly and fully, and then that we added some contaminated fuel, and it caused a motor overheat and destroyed the motor. That's what he's claiming. Uh, okay. So uh, that, that seems impossible to me, but right. I will you, certainly ask the, my guys that had filled it that morning. Where did they get the fuel um, from? Our fuel tank, or was there a can in the garage? We, our fuel, no, our fuel tank. It yep. was we unloaded it off the trailer. It started hard, so we started looking around. Noticed the tank was almost on empty, so I to, I told the guys to bring it over to the pumps. So it came right out of our fuel fuel tank that we use on every piece of machine that we have. Yep, that's what I told you. Um, yep. And we filled it. And so there was no no way that anything could have been contaminated by a by a gas can five gallon gas can or, you know, any any other way. It came right out of the pump uh, at our shop. So right. um but I didn't personally pump that, so I can't yeah. really say, but I know my guys know the difference between gasoline and diesel fuel. Right. Um, um, so, so I don't he, think that's like, possible. The, the, uh, the guy who delivered it, did he stick around till you got it as you worked on, or did he just take off? Uh, he was there, and actually when he was there taking care of his chains and his tie downs and stuff, uh, while I was trying to start it, and I sort of made the joke, why don't you wait, why don't you stick around? Um, but then we got it started, and we brought it over to fuel it up, and so he was done putting his tools away and took off, and it wasn't until we got out on the road to get to a site where we could use, you know, put some brush through it, uh, is when we noticed that it was it was acting the way it was yeah so i mean the first the first thing for me the first red light for me was that it didn't start immediately right. yeah i mean that's a tiny little motor it should have as soon as you hit that key it should pop right off it that's should be current that's right and it didn't i churned and churned and churned until it was like okay maybe i don't want to burn the starter out there's something that i'm missing i thought there was something a safety switch or something that I was missing, but it turns out there was there's nothing. I mean, I did all the every I checked all the safety stuff and it was all in proper place. So contamination is not from us. I can assure I can assure you that. 
Yeah, I, I, and that's what I told him. But so here comes the battle. This is going to be a yep, yep. So he's saying oh. that he will. Uh, it's interesting. He didn't say he'd fix the motor and return it, and we'll have to settle up a difference. He said he's going to fix the motor, see what the cost of it is, and then deduct the cost of fixing the motor and transportation both ways, um, and then he'll give us a, a refund of the difference. From our original purchase price so there's obviously going to be a lot more discussion with the guy um but let's yep. we'll have to just yep. take it as it comes see where it goes so <laughs> yeah well uh while we're on that topic i just i put on today's order i put the the invoice for the diagnosis uh on the order so and i sent I mean, that to him and so he's obviously yep. not going to pay that either because he's claiming that we damaged it. So should we hold up on paying that invoice? No. That's it, not, but that's not fair uh, to the people who did the diagnosis, right? It, right. It's not fair to Mill yeah. and Cat because they, yeah. they, we, we asked them to, to do that. And so, right. Yeah. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest doing that. Okay. Um, but we certainly will keep record of it. And we have to, in my opinion, uh, we have to go after the company we bought it from to to retrieve that money. I think I think any further discussion of this we need to do in executive session. The details okay. approach. Thank you, thank you, John. Okay. I agree. All right, Alfred. Anything else? Um, no. The only thing I was going to ask you guys is um, we've got the. The, the speed limit signs have come in. Yeah, and Toby mentioned Toby and that. I are, Toby and I are working out some of the details with it. It's got to be programmed, and uh, somebody has to go through a webinar before we can program it. And um, hmm. But I'm wondering where you guys want me to put it. I know one spot is on the county road coming into Maple Corners, but... Can you give me other locations that it should go to? Well, Toby mentioned that. He didn't mention anything about programming and webinars and stuff, but thank you for giving us more information. Um, he said something about putting it in Maple Corner where we've routinely had the speed cart. Um, and then he asked us to be thinking about where else we might want it. We talked about somewhere on Lightning Ridge. Um, on a blind corner there. So we said that we would get back to him at our next select board meeting with other alternative locations. So so what, from a, a standpoint of, so you have these metal rod things that you have to put into the ground to be able to move it around, is that right? Yeah, we gotta put these, what they call anchors. We just yep. drive these anchors into the ground uh, in certain spots and then we can the unit will be all on a post by itself so we can just move it from one spot to another but we need to put anchors in that are you know uh, crash protected so mm -hmm. if somebody hits it it'll fold over and not come into the windshield um, now when so you, when locating you, those is important when you put the anchor thing in the ground and the speed thing isn't on top of it. Is there some way that it's marked so people can see the post? Uh, no, because they're they're only like six inches out of the ground, so you wouldn't see them. Oh, the okay, okay, I see. I was Unless, thinking it was up high. Right. Okay. Unless well, I mean, I could put a put a grade stake or something somehow to mark it that way, uh, because we are approaching snow, which will cover up. You know, six inches will cover up very, yeah. very quickly. Right. So you would mark. So I was like just wanting, just wanting you guys to think about other locations, so I can put them, put the anchors in before the ground freezes, and we have all those other difficulties. Yeah. Okay. We said we would get back to this on um, at our meeting on the ninth, but we know we want the one in Maple Corner. Yep. And 
do folks want to agree tonight to the blind corner on Lightning Ridge? At least it's one place that they can go ahead and install an anchor. Uh, which is the blind corner again? I don't know. I think you said it, John. Oh, there's a there's a bend there where I I was thinking it's on a downhill, and I know they fly down that hill. Uh, it's at the corner of Tucker and and uh, Lightning Ridge. That area, that stretch. Mm -hmm. um, well, it wouldn't hurt anything to put an anchor in, right? Nope. So that would be two locations, Alfred. Okay. Are we clear yep. on on which side of Tucker we're talking about? It's well, coming it down. It has to be on the, no, not, be on the right Tucker. side of the travel lane. There, it's not Tucker. Oh, I see. <laughs> Beyond Tucker or before Tucker, you're saying, Sharon? Yes. Um, yeah, good point, Alfred. We'll put it on the right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, coming down, right? That's where you come around that corner and there's a bit of a straightaway. Yep. And it's steep incline. Mm -hmm. So heading from Adamant Road down to 14 on the right, just past Tucker in there somewhere. Yeah, yep. that makes sense. That's a good spot for it. Mm -hmm. So past Tucker, you're, the you're already in, you, right, you're already or into even, that corner though. You should be before Tucker. That might be right. Tucker Road intersection. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you think is best. You gotta, you gotta give them some warning. You know what I mean? That, that's clearly it's before the corner, if it's before Tucker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're, okay. Yeah. So I agree. I think, Where, wherever you think it makes the most sense, given the issue. Okay. 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 Yep. And Toby, Toby said you, we haven't received the permits from VTrans yet. Um, so I guess we stay tuned. Right, right. We are working on that um, as far as the the concrete base that we have to get made and the posts and all that. We're still working on that because it has to follow the criteria that the state requires in there right away. Um, so I have actually talked with the road commissioner for Danville because they just installed some over there and he has sent me the information that I needed for, um, you know, for, to follow the state's criteria. Yeah, and Woodbury did it too, right? Uh, yes, yep, yeah, Woodbury did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good for you for checking with other towns, thank you. Yeah, well, it's it's just easier to, you know, because the state has a certain criteria and these suppliers make different types of of posts and and the concrete bases. So we wanted to use what is uh, what the state requires. So that's why we, you know, went with somebody that just did it. It was, it was just done, just barely done. Okay. Very so good. Working process. Working process. A lot of steps. Yes. All right. If there's nothing, anybody have anything else for Alfred? Come on. There's got to be a complaint on the road or something. There's got to be yet. something oh. they can <laughs> ask me. <laughs> Not yet. Actually. No. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay. I guess I'm doing a good job then, huh? <laughs> Alfred, I did have one thing. Um, okay. Yeah, you graded Lightning Ridge and they left quite a berm. You know, a berm all along the road. Uh, give me specifics. Where about? Right at my house. Right. Okay. At, you know, yeah. Yeah. So there's quite a berm. So, you know, there's because of that, there's no way that water would be able to get over that to sheet off of the road. So the grading yeah. was okay, but there's quite a berm. It's really quite visible. So if you're well, if you're around here, check it out. I will take a look at it. I'm guessing yeah. probably there's, uh, you know, needs to be a ditch, either a ditch dug there or, or berm removal. Yeah. Um, but I will have a look at it, certainly. So, so it's Thank on, you. on your you. side, your driveway side of of Lightning Ridge? It's, 
it's very visible on both sides of the road but especially on the other side of the road across from my driveway. Okay. But you could see okay. it. Yep. 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 Um, if it's on the other side of the driveway, it might have something to do with being the operators being afraid of taking people's lawn. Oh. <laughs> so that's just, just, just another obstacle that we have. Yep. So, um, uh, but Just, I will look at yeah. it. I will certainly look at it, and then I can have a better opinion about what uh, what went on there. Yeah, no problem. Thank you yep. for grading. Okay, very good. So um, I guess that's it, Alfred. For Actually, I had something, Denise. Oh, okay. Sorry, Cliff. Alfie, it's Cliff. I just want to thank you for getting some spare traffic cones over to the town hall for the event that we had there over the weekend. And sure. uh, we are done with them. So whenever it's convenient for you, feel free to grab them. Okay. Okay. I sure will. I almost grabbed them today, but I wasn't certain. So uh, I'll grab them either tomorrow or the next day. Yeah. Anytime that works yeah. for you. I checked with uh, Judy and Barbara. They said they wouldn't need them for the election. So they're yours. Yep. Don't, okay. for, don't, don't forget the maps when you're over there. <laughs> the ma Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the cloud route maps. Hopefully, they yep. can be. Hopefully, you can read them now. Yeah. Well, me and the crew have been working on it, so we've already got some ideas, so we can. Okay. Great. We'll, we'll be, the, we'll be the idea you. to the paper. Yeah, that's we'll great be to hear. From you on November 9th. Yep. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay. Uh, Denise, you guys as well. Okay. Denise, Bye thank now. you for for um, getting them to capital copy to. Um, for bigger copies. Yeah, yeah, anything to make their job easier. Um, all right, so we have, I can't believe this, we are 10 minutes ahead of schedule. So we can either take um, ECT, ECCT next, and um, I don't think it will take too long depending on how many questions there are. And then we'll have to, when Peter Lividitis and um, Tom Blatchley, come on. They'll just have to wait for a few minutes. Um, does that sound acceptable to the board? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, mm -hmm. so first off, um, I just want to say that as a board member of ECCT, I am going to recuse myself on any vote you all take in regards to the request that's being made. I may have a question or a comment. Um, but other than that, I am not going to vote on what you decide. But I would like to ask that we all of us introduce each other, the ECC keyboard and consultants and um, the Cal Select Board. So Alfred, are you still on? Yes. Okay. Is that okay? It's a, the rest of this is a public meeting, so you're welcome to attend on your own time for a public meeting, absolutely. Okay, okay, I think I will stay on. Okay, so Cliff, would you like to introduce yourself? You're on mute. Yeah, that's my way of saying no, I don't want to introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cliff Emmons, member of the College Select Board. Uh, okay, Denise Wheeler, Select Board and ECCT Board. Rose? Rose Pelchuk, Cala Select Board. Katie? Katie Lane Karnas, I'm the Recording Secretary for the Select Board. And Jan? Jan Olson, um, Board Member of ECCT. John? Uh, John Brabant, Cal Select Board and strong supporter of this effort. Thank you. Sharon? Sharon Wynn, Cal Select Board. Okay, Mark Mahali. You got to take yourself off mute, Mark. Liz, you're going to be next. I'm Mark Mahali. I'm uh, chair of the board of uh, East Calus Community Trust. Okay, Liz. Good evening. I'm Liz Curry, and I'm a community development consultant. Okay, Brian. And I'm Brian Pine, um, also a community development <laughs> consultant working with East Calus Community Trust. And Alfred. 
Alfred Larrabee, Road Commissioner. And, and East Callis resident. Of East, East Callis resident, that's correct. Yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to let, I think the best way to do this is let um, Mark and Liz and Brian tell us what is going on, get an update and what they're here for tonight to ask from the board. Thanks a lot, Denise. Uh, <clears throat> forgive me, I'm a little hoarse, but I, I hope you can hear me. Um, so uh, lots happened since we appeared before you guys to update you. Um, uh, we acquired the building in June with local donations and a loan from Northfield Savings. And we've uh, successfully completed remediation of the site with removal of the remaining tanks that were on the site and actually the Department of Environmental Conservation is in the process of writing a closure letter for the site. Um, they're, they're gonna keep a few monitoring wells that date from the 1990s on the site, although they're closing down at least one and anticipate that within a few years, the concentrations will fall below state standards. So that's all good news. So now we're turning to renovation, which is really a fairly major effort. Um, we retained Ryan Edwards as the architect. Uh, he, did, he was the architect on Memorial Hall. Ryan is working away on a full set of plans for the conceptual plans first, and we'll, um, we'll um, seek community input on those plans. <clears throat> and in fact, uh, we're sending out a questionnaire to the community. Another member of our board is Melissa Bruff, who's not with us tonight. And she's handling that, putting it on Front Porch Forum. We retain Brian and Liz as development consultants. Uh, Brian also, by the way, knows what it's like to be a select board person. He's on the, he's on the board of uh, the, the, the city council in Burlington. But he and Liz both have a lot of experience with getting grants and administering them. And um, we have right now about 200,000. These are rough numbers about 200,000 bucks in donations, authorized grants and tax credits. Um, we hired a senior cost estimator and we think the whole project for the whole building that is renovating the entire building, including the apartments and the store is gonna go cost north of $700,000. Um, so we have about 200,000 in donations and grants and tax credits. So that leaves about 500,000 to raise. Uh, we are applying for, and I, and I think somewhat confident of grants from the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board and from the Present Preservation Trust of Vermont, which has been really supportive of this project. But one major grant is the Community Development Block Grant administered by the Agency of Commerce and Community Development, ACCD. And that grant could account for as much as half of what we need. Um, like the, I, you guys are probably familiar with the Certified Local Government or CLG grant grants. Uh, we had one which flowed through the town. Well, this one is like that. It, if, if we were to decide to apply for the block grant, it has to be applied for by the town and then we're called a sub-recipient. Uh, and if we, if we mutually did decide to apply for the grant and got it, all the administrative burden of the grant would fall on ECCT as the sub-recipient, not the town. And we would, we would, the grant would pay for us to hire uh, someone like Liz, for example, to, 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 to do all the administrative work. And I'm going to ask Liz and Brian to come in briefly in a minute, but they've got experience representing small towns like us with uh, staff stretched beyond thin. Um, so the Agency of Commerce staff, actually, it's interesting. <clears throat> They're kind of our advocate. So they, they, they want us to to get a grant if we possibly can. And so they're our advocate and, and they've urged that we, through the town, that we uh, put together a pre-application and, uh, and allow them, the, the pre-app will allow them to tell us how to frame the grant application to maximize our attractiveness uh, and our chances. And also give us a sense of 
how much we could apply for. Uh, the pre-app doesn't commit either of either the town or us in any way to proceed. I mean, we could always decide that we don't want to apply. Um, so, so it doesn't commit us in any way. So what we're asking for you tonight is, well, first of all, we're here to answer any of your questions and that's what and I'm going to ask Brian and Liz, if you would talk in just a minute briefly, but um, what we're asking for is simply, would you authorize the filing of a pre-application? Um, and we, then we'll file that and, and, and see what happens. If we think it's worthwhile applying for the grant, we would, Brian and Liz would put together a grant application working with us and we'd come back to you again <clears throat> with a draft grant application to see what your comments and thoughts are. And then finally, before we actually filed, there's a public hearing requirement, we'd come back again with the final application and you would have to approve it. But this, at this point, it's pretty preliminary. Uh, Brian that, and uh, Liz, do you want to comment briefly? Sure, I would add that the, um, the pre-application is simply a way to allow the town and the nonprofit and uh, whoever else is involved in and in, in is a stakeholder to really just assess whether this is an undertaking that is uh, is the wisest path, is the best path forward in terms of um, accessing the resources, but also recognizing that um, a small town with a very small staff uh, only has so much capacity to handle these types of undertakings. But if, if funded, uh, you know, you can essentially purchase those services to allow for this, these resources to uh, come into town to support the redevelopment of this incredibly important property for the community. So um, it's, uh, I think it's a, it's a source that has proven to be one of the, one of the ways the federal government actually returns some, some dollars to local communities in a, in a really meaningful and impactful way. So it's a national program that started in the seventies and, um, it has made a huge difference across the nation, really. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Um, so the Community Development Block Grant Program is a, um, you know, federally funded, the federal formula funds come to the state. And the goal is to uh, enable municipalities to achieve projects that improve the community in a number of different areas, um, like the general store as an economic development and a historic preservation project. Um, it, as a federal program, it does have a regulatory burden. And um, I've been administering community development grants for municipalities in Vermont for 30 years. Um, in terms of the uh, other comparable municipalities to yours, I've administered them for Richford, Enosburg, and Swanton. So, um, you know, it's possible for you to delegate the authority to administer the grant to an entity that is doing the project that's very common, especially for affordable housing organizations. They typically request a municipality to support a grant that they can use to build affordable housing and then they typically administer the grant and that's how I became familiar and experienced with grant administration. Um, there, there are regulatory burdens. And I think what we would probably do is, it, you know, if you all are comfortable signaling your agreement to apply, then we would go through those regulatory requirements with you. They, they make everything very transparent. There is a checklist um, that, you know, we could share with you and indicate um, what the town's responsibilities are. So for example, um, all municipalities that receive these funds need to adopt a set of codes and policies that are common um, and allow you to does, you know, essentially receive the funds, just be in compliance with um, receiving the funds. And other things are like setting up a separate segregated uh, non-interest bearing account uh, that the grants could flow through um, so that they can be tracked. And, you know, we would handle all the requisitions and all the financials um, 
and they they uh, the program provides forms that are all very standard, um, and then those forms would have the um, receipts attached or the invoices attached, and that would form the uh, basis for their programmatic audit. Um, all of the co any costs to the town are reimbursed by the grant, so you would not have to use any of your budget for the grant. Um, so there's there's just you know a range of re federal requirements and there's a checklist for that and we could go through that but those are some examples of what I would do as the grant administrator and working with whoever your designee is in terms of the financials. Thank you. Uh, at this point, you know we're not we're not yet ready to apply for the grant. I mean it's conceivable that we wouldn't think it would be worth it but I, th I think more likely than not, we would, but we do want to go ahead and file a pre-app. By the way, Brian, when is this due? The final grant. Final application is due February 9th with a right. decision on April 1st. Yeah. So we're here, we'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have about this and hope that you'd support the resolution uh, drafted to allow us to file the jointly the, the pre-application. Cliff may want to call up that resolution and Rose has a question. Hi, Rose. Hi, I um, I reviewed the resolution today and I made a couple of edits. Um, <laughs> sorry. You mean you found um, typos, damn it? No. Um, and actually, um, Cliff can pull up. With your edits, Rose. Yeah, he can pull it up. And I just want to, Tom, Tom, I, Tom, I sent you a chat message. We were ahead of schedule, so we took East Callis Community Trust first. So what I did here was um, just for ease of use, I numbered the paragraphs, but of course, that's just for um, editing purposes only. So in paragraph two, where you had that, the um, ECCT acquired the general store. I thought it would be better to say that you purchased it because acquired, in my view, I thought someone handed it over. Um, maybe it was defaulted or a tax sale or whatever. So you, in if it's true that you purchased it, I like the word purchase better. Um, and then I wrote on the second line that this building is in East Callis Village, just again to hammer home the point um, that this is the heart of East Callis Village. Um, and then um, the, oh, at the end, I, I made some further comments. And um, again, for the purpose of flow, I wrote that um, I suggest moving paragraph four after paragraph six. I thought it flowed better if you talked you had number five where you talked about the federal government, um, the HUD, then paragraph six where you talked about the state program, the community development program, and then you put paragraph four, which would be bringing it to the local level. So for me, that's just a suggestion. I thought it flowed better if it went five, six, and then paragraph four. Um, and I thought that we should ditch the, align the header on page one, align and fix the header and delete the footer on page one. Um, I don't think we need to give them the phone number at the bottom or our website. I didn't think that that was pertinent information. Um, and the last thing on page two, paragraph 11, um, I just wanted to say that I believe the Callis Select Board fully supports and will authorize uh, the submission of this pre-application. Um, and so I just wanted to um, really just cement the thought that we fully support that. So those are my suggested, suggested edits. Thank you, Rose. You're welcome. <laughs> I, uh, this, I wanted to ask a couple of questions. Uh, first, a clarifying question. I assume, um, but I want to confirm that 
the letter's our letter. And unless there's something disruptive about the changes Rose is suggesting, then we're free to make those changes. Certainly, that, I think it's yeah. improved. Okay. Uh, can you, I might have I might have missed it and I apologize if I did when you were speaking, but can you tell us a little bit about what what the award might be and what the work that a, a grant like this would pay for? Yeah, I think I'll just say we're thinking something more than 200,000. Um, and Brian, you want to comment? Yeah, the, um, the, the benefit of this project uh, at this moment in time is that the building is in the hands of East Calais Community Trust. So the, the, the purchase has been completed. And with that completed, uh, the dollars being sought will go in, into, you know, primarily into the actual cost of contractors to do the renovation, rehabilitation, and restoration. It will also cover these additional costs uh, that will be required for, for instance, what Liz said about the audit and the grant administration and those other costs will be included. So it is a, uh, um, as Mark said, we, we anticipate more than 200,000 in the request um, and perhaps um, up to 400,000 as the you know maximum. There is certainly an upper limit at some point and we're, that's part of the pre-application process is to work with staff to find that number that is really the sweet spot and they're gonna help us figure that out. So I'd say it's somewhere in that range. Uh, we have a couple other large requests that will be submitted prior to this deadline uh, that together, uh, if we were to approach that 400,000 number, uh, we start to get to um, what is needed to, to have enough funds to do this entire project and in a way that is the most sustainable, which is really a debt-free uh, renovation. Uh, we will have acquired, I should say, ECCT will have used some debt to acquire the building. But if you can do the renovation without debt, you then aren't forced to keep rents uh, as high and you can you can keep a store in there at a really reasonable rent and also provide really affordable housing for the residents. It's my impression, Brian, is this right in answer to the question that unlike some of our grants are pretty narrow in terms of what we can use them for, you know, we can use them for a facade improvement uh, because they're historic preservation. This grant, because it, it addresses both low-income housing and, com and community development economic activity, would be usable for both the store and the, um, and the residences. Is yes, that right? It is. It's very broad in terms of what it can be used for. That's correct. All they care about is, are you meeting a national objective? And that's what the pre-application will tell us. Okay, are there any Thank more you. questions? Any more questions, John, Cliff? Go ahead, Cliff. Yeah, I just wanna make sure I'm clear on the process here. So assuming you decide to move forward with the grant and apply for it, um, the town's part of it is basically acknowledging when money's come in for it and keeping uh, tabs on, on what's been spent. Um, and the ECCT will basically do all the administration of the grant. Is that a fair statement? Yes. Well, uh, <clears throat> all the requisitions have to be prepared by the ECCT's consultant. And, um, <coughs> and, and the town just essentially signs off on them. And then the money flows through this check from the federal government through the state to the checking account to the contractors without the town actually touching the money, if you will. Um, at the end, there's an audit, and that's paid for as well uh, by the grant. Uh, Liz, what have I left out? Well, um, I'm just, I'm just going to say one quick thing, and it's funny. Yeah, hi, Jan. Think, think of the town as our offshore account where the money just passes through. Fair enough. I, Thank and, you. And, yeah, I, and I, 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 did check with, I did check with Sandra, our treasurer, to give her a heads up on this, and she said as long as all she's got to do is write checks and that kind of stuff. She doesn't have any concerns about the workload. And I'll just clarify that, that tonight, uh, this resolution would not bind you to apply for the grant at all. So, you know, there will be ample opportunity to answer more detailed questions like the administrative functions, if you'd like to. 
Yeah, Cliff, what, what I think would happen is, let's say you authorize this, then we'll, we'll, we'll put together a pre-app, send it to them, then we'll engage in discussions with them. Let's say after the discussions, yeah, we want to apply. So then Brian and Liz and us will put together an application that's just a draft and we'll bring it to the town and ask you guys what you think of it uh, and get any input that you want to make to it and, and go over the pertinent details. And that's it, no action. And then sometime before February 9th, we'd, we'd come back with the final application and you'd hold a hearing and approve and approve it if you wanted to go ahead. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you very much. So I gotta take it off me. I got any more questions for Mark or Liz or Brian? Okay, and back to Rose's suggested changes. It sounds like the board is good with that. So, uh oh, somebody's phone. Yeah, um, Greg will okay. get it. Okay, um, so how would you like to proceed with making a decision on the resolution? You, somebody want to make a motion to approve the resolution with Rose's suggested edits? Yeah, I'll move that. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. And I'm recusing myself, so I'm not going to vote. Um, Cliff, are you have any further comments? Anybody? Questions? All right, Cliff. Aye. Rose? Aye. John? Aye. Sharon? Aye. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Presentation. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you a lot. Great. Good night, everybody. Thank you for good your night. work. Good night. Good night. Night. Okay, Tom and Peter. I'm sorry we we ended up being like 15 minutes ahead of schedule. That's so, okay. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, but appreciate your patience. No problem. Um, so, um, Peter, where do you live? And do you know all of the board members? Maybe we should introduce ourselves. You want to go around? I know John, uh, no. but I haven't had the pleasure of meeting the rest of you. So, okay, I'm, hello. I'm, I'm Denise Wheeler on the board. I live in North Callis. Sharon? Hi, I'm Sharon Winfan, and I'm a member of the board. Hi. Rose? I'm Rose Pelchuk. I live on Lightning Ridge. I'm on the board. And Cliff? Cliff Emmons, also a member of the Cal Select Board. I live over in Maple Corner. Great. And just Great. for clarification, Denise, I think you asked where Peter lives. He lives in Davis Charrington's old house. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, I, yeah. Davis Charrington and yep, know the crew. Great place up there, isn't it? It's beautiful. It certainly is. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, very nice. So you're interested in being on the trails committee. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, Tom, any comments? I think the board no. really. I think the board really just likes to meet people who they don't have. No. Um, you know, haven't been on other committees and committee things like that, so that we know who we know who we are when we see you in the co-op. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I pulled the uh, committee and they were all in agreement that Peter would be, be a great addition to the committee. Uh, he's, uh, he has a land that um, he's dedicated part of it for the one of the trails. Nice. Um, and so that's, that's a plus but um, no, uh, it's, it's, a, I think, a, a great a great idea, a great selection and a great addition. And we're sorry to lose uh, Randy Allen, who was a longtime member and very active in the trail um, maintenance and construction. But he said he would still be involved in that. He just didn't want to do committee work anymore. Okay. So. Well, at least the trails committee is, is fun. Right? <laughs> yeah. Go outside hiking around. Yeah. Oh, we have a lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds like it.
Okay, so um, any more comments or questions from the board? All right, I would make a motion that we appoint Peter Lividitis to fill the unexpired term of Randy Allen 2022 to the Trails Committee. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, are you ready to vote? Cliff? Aye. I'm an aye. Rose? Aye. It's a three year term. Thank you. John? I and just, just want to make clear that uh, Peter and his extended family have been very engaged in the trail network as Tom Blatchley has made made known. Um, so great addition to be on board. Thank you, Peter. Thank Sharon? you, Jen. Sharon, did you want to vote? Yes, I. Okay, very good. Thank you so very much. We really appreciate your jumping in and helping out the town. It's, it's yeah. like a lot of fun. Thank you all very much. I, I had the um, privilege of getting to know Randy and we actually spent a lot of time working on trails together. So I'm um, really flattered that you invited me to join. So thank you. Welcome aboard. Yes, thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll look forward to next steps. All righty. Keep, uh, Keep us up to date, thank Tom. You. Thank you, everyone. All right. All right. Take care. Thank Take you. care, good night. Okay, town hall. Is there any update, Cliff, other than he's almost done painting? Yeah, um, uh, he actually got a lot of work done over the weekend that uh, he wasn't expecting to get as much done as he did. And Grady tells me he's pretty sure he's going to be able to wrap up the paint job this week. Wow. That guy is a worker. I'll tell you, he's there sun up to sundown. I see him go by every day. Amazing. Yeah. He's, and he's really good too. Week. He's, he week. Yeah. He does a really good job. He's he really is enjoying the project, and you can tell from his work that you know it's it's a labor of love for him. That steeple, um, I don't know. It definitely won't need to be painted again in our lifetime. It may not need to be painted again in the next generation's lifetime. There's portions of it that have uh, five coats on it. All right, and then do you want to just give a quick update on the tours? Yeah, the tours went quite well. We had, I think it was uh, 17 people uh, take us up on the invitation. We were thinking there might be more, but the rain might have dampened enthusiasm a little, but it was very well received, uh, positive comments all the way around, and uh, a lot of excitement. Um, people can't wait till we can start using the building again. Um, can anyone guess what the number one question was? Uh, when, when is town meeting coming back? Are we going to start using the building for town meeting again? Town meeting. Yep. <laughs> mm. I'm not surprised. Yep. I'm not surprised. Yep. Um, we even had a um, member from um, the Argus uh, Montpelier oh. paper. Uh, Jeb, Jeb, Jeb Wallace Broder. Yep, yep. He took some pictures and um, probably would see that in a paper tomorrow or Wednesday, I'm thinking. Oh, nice. And Barbara did a great job um, decorating, doing some fall decorations in there. If you get a um, chance, it's worth it to stop by and take a look because they're going to leave them up for a little while longer, but they'll nice. have to take them down before the election. Oh, they can't be left up over election. That might make things a little bit more homey. Uh, I think it's problematic because they need all the table space they can to set up oh, the voting stations and maintain the social distancing. Got it. Okay. Did you guys take pictures? There's a lot of pictures. Uh, one okay. of the neat things that uh, Scott did is he has an archive of pictures. So he placed them strategically throughout the building so people could compare what it is now versus how it looked before. That was uh, a great idea. Yep. Great idea. That's wonderful. It'd be nice to take those pictures and hang them up in the in the building. Yeah, there's definitely some mm -hmm. pictures that will um, show the history of the building and different uh, incarnations. Okay. And um, yeah, it was it was it was fun. It was good. Great. And, uh, yeah, lots of smiles and people couldn't believe some of that cabinets um, using the old pew boxes and whatnot. Those are amazing. That's my favorite part. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think that's a pretty common sentiment. Okay, so what's going on with the friends? Well, the friends are um, hoping that we can uh, get the management agreement uh, usage guidelines um, signed off on, and then we will finalize the development of the um, rental agreement, general terms and conditions, et cetera. But, yeah, I'm, I'll be right back. Okay. But uh, pretty much as far as any initial act, immediate activities for the near future, uh, we're going to kind of go on a hi hiatus for the next couple of months because of the holidays and whatnot. And with winter, there's not going to be a lot of activity in the building. But we do have it on the radar for some grants that we can look to apply for um, come January, February of next year. And once we know a little bit more about that, we'll inform everyone what's going on. So if there's no other questions around that, I can pull up those documents. We can take a look at them if everyone's ready to see those. Chomping at the bit, okay. Let's see, first. I'll pull up the proposed revised guidelines. So hopefully everyone can see those now. It, this is a, a revision of a document that is on the town website. Um, basically adds in the element of the uh, expanded use of the hall for um, cultural activities, but we want to cement that first and foremost, it serves municipal purposes. So I don't know if there's any questions there. So we're basically taking the guidelines that we had and kind of just, um, I think they were longer. I didn't look at the old ones. They were longer. They had, I can pull them up if you'd like to see them. Give me a sec here. These were approved by the board back in 2017. And the note on the website says that they're currently not active because the hall was closed for renovations. Okay. Anybody have any question on that? Okay. All right, let me stop that share and pull the revised ones up again. Do you think you should put a date on it? Yeah, we should. Yeah, the idea was is once the select board approves it, we would add that line that says approved by select board on date X. Mm -hmm. And is this to be this is to be signed by the board? Well, the other document wasn't signed by the board. It just had a note on it as to when it was approved, when it was reviewed and approved by the board. Okay. Is it a is it a policy? Guidelines. Yeah, I mean it's under the policies and it's essentially a policy. Yeah. It's under the policy section of the website. So it is a bit of a de facto policy. So if we can a, always change it to say policy. Yeah, if it's a policy, then I think we should get ourselves out of the out of the ambiguity and just call it a policy. Um, and then on that 
but Cliff, I'm interested in your reaction about whether there's a difference between a policy and a guideline in this context and what the implications of that might be. And then if it is a policy, not only would I want to date it, but this might be as good a time as any to kind of up our game on putting in a, a date um, on which we will review it or the board three years mm -hmm. up for re review again, November 2023. Or after COVID is relaxed. Yeah, um, would, either, yeah, either way. I would, I would suggest that um, as far as the, the first part of your uh, line of questioning there, Sharon, I think it was just called guidelines and that's historically what it was. So that's what we went with. And I don't have a problem formally referring to it as a policy. And if that anchors things better and clarifies it for all intents and purposes, then yeah, I'd support that. Yeah. Um, and as far as reviewing the document, yeah, because we have this section down here in italics regarding situation with COVID, we would need to come back to it when we're ready to remove that restriction. Um, pretty simple rev at that point, obviously. And then as far as a regular review of it, we could do it every three years or we could agree to do it every year because it, the management agreement that we're proposing would be subject to an annual review. So we could do it at this, we could put something in to say, that we would review this at the same time we are reviewing the management agreement and vice versa on the management agreement. Right. So that we can keep track of it. But I do agree it should say policy. It's a little, it's a little, I think we like guidelines because it feels a little friendlier, but that's exactly what's going to bite us at some time. Yeah, Is this a policy? No, it's just a guideline. It's an easy fix. Yeah. And we can add a signature section and formal date and language regarding the review. Okay, so we're, wanna... so, so the review, so it will say that we review it no less frequently. We will, no, I won't do it that way. That we review it at least annually in conjunction with our review of the management agreement. Yep. Um, and then we can put the same language on the management agreement and then we can help keep track of it. That'll be the next question. How are we going to keep track of this? But we got to do, we got to find a way. Yeah, we got to <laughs> find a way somehow we could, you know, we could do something similar to our appointed positions. Maybe this is something Katie could work on. I was going to say, it seems up, like a coming up with a spreadsheet to help us keep track of when we did it, when we agreed to review it. So Katie, is that something that you might be able to have time to put together? Well, then okay. the third part, the all important third part of looking at that every month and getting things on our agenda. Yep, yep. Okay, so with those- There's uh, another way we could think about doing that as well. I agree, uh, spreadsheet master document keep track of all of these um, but we could also that's why I started looking at creating the select board group as a gmail account or a google account I should say um, because then we could have a calendar that we review on a regular basis and that would have uh, prompts in it to remind us hey now's when we're supposed to be looking at this particular policy or that particular okay. issue uh, you that's know housekeeping stuff yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. I do that with my Outlook calendar for stuff that I need to remember to do. So that's a good idea. So with those suggestions, um, and Cliff, if you could make those, how do you want, do you want to put this on again for an agenda item or are you able to review it and sign off on it with the changes we suggested? I will go either way at the board's uh, preference. I would I actually, like to insert one word. What's that? In, I would like to insert one word okay. um, in the third paragraph 
the use of alcohol flames and then after flames put a slash and fireworks or engagement and other activities um, just so that people are clear they can't shoot fireworks without a permit. Yeah, good point. Okay, and, I can do that. Yeah, flames slash fireworks. Sharon, you were going to make a comment? Uh, yeah, I I think we should all actually sign the policies. Yes. So we can, when Cliff gets it ready, maybe we can do a leave it at the town office, everybody sign kind of thing. And we can do the same thing if we agree to the management document tonight so that we just stop by and sign it once. I would think it's important for everybody to sign this. Yep, that's a good practice. Otherwise, I would remember we did it if I don't actually go sign it. All right, Cliff, do you want to do the management agreement? Yes. Do we need a, a motion to approve this document? For yes, we do. Are sign? you making Are you making such motion with changes as noted? I, I will make such a motion. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor, Cliff. I will opt to recuse myself. Okay. I'm an I. Rose. I. John. Yes, with the changes uh, okay. regarding signature line. Okay, Sharon? Yes. All right, very good. Well done, Cliff. Well, thank you all. Okay, management agreement. Okay. So, So I hope everybody has had a chance to look at this and also did everyone see the email Denise sent earlier today with some questions that I then responded to. Overwhelming yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so are there questions, suggestions, other issues we should discuss around this? Do you want to just run through my questions? I can. Um, let me stop sharing this so I can pull up those questions. Okay, it's lost in a sea of emails. Bear with me. I can just ask them again as you go through it. Well, uh, if I can, let me see if I can find them real quick. While, while you're looking, I, I do have a question. Is this Friends in an incorporated organization? It is. <coughs> it is. Okay. Yep. All right. Fully registered uh, nonprofit. Okay. Because it talks and, basically setting up a contract, contractual arrangement. Exactly. And I'd like to discuss a little bit of that when we get into it. All right, I'm not finding the email right away. So let me um, pull the document up again. And then Denise can walk us through her questions. I have it open. Okay, uh, let me turn screen share over. You've got screen share. Okay. So, um, all right, that means I have to actually share. Is this what this is what you wanted, right? Yes. I have questions. Yeah. I, I, I realize I hope that's what we're talking about. What um, is that a better thing for us to have open than what you had open? Uh, not really. We should probably go through the management agreement. Yeah, and I, I, I'll just keep them open. And, and but Denise, you probably have them open. I have my questions. Yeah, so we don't need okay. that. If Cliff can call up the management agreement. Yeah. 
and then we can address everybody's questions. Okay, you want to stop your screen share then, and I will pull that up. Okay, so your first question, Denise. My first question was about adding page numbers, date, that kind of stuff, which you have done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so my first question had to do with the security deposit. I don't remember what page that's on. Okay, that should be. There's the duties. Now it was before that. I kind of went through it line, you know, paragraph by paragraph. And, um, there it I is. The security the deposit. Yeah. Right so my here. question was, so my question was, is the idea that the, why would the town um, clerk, why isn't it the treasurer? And why would the town hold the security deposit? Is it just for safekeeping? Or what was the reasoning just, behind that? Just for safekeeping. And um, since the town clerk is the one who has a initial say over the building, that's why we thought we would have the, the security deposits submitted to the town clerk's office. If you wanted to say treasurer, we could certainly do that. Um, the whole idea about um, the checks was mainly just a secure location to hold them in. Okay, that's what I thought. So the idea would just be that it would, they would be held in the vaults for safekeeping. Right. Okay. Um, my next question has had to do with the, um, there is a key in the lockbox, but if we use the lockbox, we would have, it has to do with the key. Right. So thought, the document says that, you know, makes reference that the, after the end of the event, the person who was the agent or whoever scheduled the event has to return the key, the tenant key to the town clerk. We could expand that to the town clerk or the friends group. Um, we could control it all through the lockbox, but that means after any event, we'd have to change the code on the lockbox. Right. Okay. It and just seemed like it should be the friends maybe who take charge of getting the key back instead of giving that to the clerk as another duty to do. Okay, I can change that. A lot of this document is based upon what they have at Plainfield. So yeah, some of those little finer points might not have been thought through. Okay. Um, and then it says, there's going to be some kind of a calendar. Where is that going to be on the friends website or on the towns or both? That would be on the friends website. It would be managed by the friends, uh, at least specifically for the time being. Artie has taken on, uh, volunteered to take that on. So people who are wanting to, they're thinking about renting the, the building for an event can see if there's things already scheduled. And uh, we could certainly anything that gets put on that calendar, we could also, you know, pass along to the town for posting on the town's calendar, mm -hmm. if, if you want that extra step in there. But already said he would also coordinate it with any activities, municipal activities that are already scheduled on the town's calendar on the website. Okay. I'm just trying, I'm just thinking what was gonna be the easiest way for town scheduling um, and friend scheduling if it's not all in one place. Mm -hmm. That's all, it's just a thought. Well, we could certainly coordinate with um, Katie or Judy or whoever, whenever we're gonna be entering something onto the uh, friends calendar mm -hmm. to have it added onto the website for the town. Yeah, I'm just trying so to think that's it's That's where room. everybody's gonna look first. Yeah, so everybody's gonna look at the town. Function. Well, everybody's going to look at the town calendar first, probably. Mm -hmm. John? So, you know, as as usual, I'm going to be the spoiler at the party. Uh, I think that's my role in life. So just want to let you know that at first. Um, 
I, I just see this as ceding a lot of authority from the town I, to a private nonprofit organization, as I understand it, that's what it's organized to do. Um, I think that to do that, for us to enter into that contract and also make payment to it, this organization, that this would require a vote of the townspeople. Uh, it's one at town meeting. So I, I would suggest that we slow this train down and put this on the warning for this town meeting. Yeah. Uh, number two, uh, I'll tell you, I, I think generally this is really good, but I have a really strong problem with under management duties. The first sentence says, friends is, is expected to provide management services maximize that word maximize the use of the facility as a venue for community events and without community events being specifically defined that means to me anything that they deem community oriented so, and it talks about private parties and weddings and all that stuff i, I just am really concerned that this is going to turn into the maple corner two party place um, or it has that potential and different than Plainfield, which is on route two. You know, if you don't get run over by a tractor trailer, that's a good day there. Um, it, but that's definitely downtown and a busy thoroughfare and people are accustomed to the busyness of this. This is Gospel Hollow with a neighbor right across the street who has expressed concern simply about increased use of that hall at a minimal level for us to substantially change the historic level of use of this building, I think sets us up for huge, huge degree of conflict. Um, and I, I don't, I think that's something that needs a full airing before the folks in town and let them decide. So that's not on my shoulders as one select board member or the, our board to make that some substantive policy change to turn that area into a, a very act, a uh, very active area. I mean, to be clear, there is a historic use of this building. Town meeting, and this, by the way, these historic uses allowed us to escape a lot of state regu regulatory scrutiny. So that we've had town meetings there and special town meetings. We've had summer select board, or I'll say summer season, warm season select board meetings planning commission meetings, conservation commissions meetings and the like. There used to be a callous women's organization that had their regular meetings there. Um, that's kind of faded over the years. But those are all very quiet uses um, other than the town meetings. Um, and I see this as resulting in a substantial change to the neighborhood. And I'm not saying that's necessarily bad, um, but I really want the town's folks, particularly those that live in that neighborhood to weigh in. They may embrace it fully, but I really feel like this is, you know, a bridge too far without having a real public conversation. Maybe we have public hearings on this change of use. So that really my two issues are the, the, the maximize language. I, th I would say remove the word maximize. I think that's going to get us in trouble, frankly, with two, Act 250. This could trigger Act 250, and I think could end up triggering a, a cascade of new regulation on the building. We escaped, I think, sprinklers. Am I right, Cliff? Yeah. Yeah. We escaped a lot of public building requirements because we said we were going to continue to use this building as it has been historically used, that there wouldn't be a, a substantive change in use. To maximize use of this building facility, i.e. use this thing every weekend to have parties and events, like basically almost like the Memorial Hall is a substantial change in use. You know, I, I for the reasons I already explained, I think this needs a, a fuller public airing. Um, and I, I would strongly encourage the board to remove the language, max the term maximize the use for community events. Should we have I, I a return, change it to support the use of the facility? Maximize is going to get us in trouble, I see, as from a regulatory standpoint, and it may end up costing us more than we anticipate. 
Um, Should we be? I have a question. The expenditure for you. Of, of town monies annually, committing to this a contract like that. Um, I just I don't think it's bad, but I I really think that we're just because another town did it. We don't know how they got to where they got and what kind of public input they took. Again, it was a very different setting, and I just really want us to slow this cart down a little bit. Not that they can't use the building, as you know, we we've already supported the use plays and stuff. But this language is very strong and really strong in the direction of turning this into a full time gathering and party event uh, facility. That just concerns me. I wonder if we should be putting in anything about the number of events that can, number of those kinds of events that can be held per month or. Well, these are the kinds something. of things that you get public input that, you right. know, we would, we would have a fuller conversation about parking and uh, folks out in the road directing traffic. Um, you know, no mention of COVID here. You know, my understanding of COVID, listening to real, uh, the real people, not the politicians. This is four years oh my before God. we get, and that's if things go well, four years, folks. Um, so I just think there's a lot of thought that needs to continue to go into this. And Cliff's got his hand up. I'll get off my stage. I think what's missing here, and it's a document that I have advocated should be presented in tandem with this document. Unfortunately, the friends group has not finished um, dotting the I's and crossing the T's on that document. And what that is, is the general terms and agreements of use as well as the rental agreement. Because several of the things that John has raised concerns about are specifically addressed in the drafts of those documents. And it was my hope that we would be, the friends group would be in a position to put all of that in front of the select board simultaneously. But we ran into some snags on the rental agreement um, and general terms and conditions of use. So perhaps that's what I need to go back to the friends group with and say, these are the kinds of concerns that are being raised. There is some specific language in here that the select board would like to see changed. And uh, we really need to present the whole package before the select board is willing to consider signing off on the agreement. And then at that point, if concern still exists that it should be in, put in front of the whole town, we can make that call then. We also need Cliff, um, and I don't know who would do this research. Um, we would need to know what the threshold level of use um, that is a, currently what well that what that was anticipated when the state issued its waivers what i can't remember what we all said i know that we made some representations as to historic use at we some could do point a min, no, we could do wait. a minute shirt search yeah but so we need to understand what that is and then we need to consult with those regulatory authorities uh is it department of public safety now that has fire safety in there yeah, wing. Um, those are the kinds of things because the last thing I would want to see is for us to get this all going and get this literally rocking and rolling, and have neighbors file a complaint with Act 250, have neighbors file a complaint with fire safety, and we make the headlines when we get regulatory letters saying you've exceeded what is was anticipated and authorized, and quite frankly represented in your applications, and then we have to backtrack and undo, and then it becomes this massive undertaking to kind of reel it back in because there's now a two year maybe level of comfort of this new level of use of the building. I don't know where those thresholds are. I kind of, I have a sense of what it is. It's whatever we used to do. And I think anything that substantially exceeds those stated margins places us at risk. You know, I we made a choice. We made a choice. We could have said, we want to make this a full tilt 365 or every weekend venue, which by the way is different than what it's historically been used for. And then we could have invested more money in upgrading that building. I, I don't think the town wants to spend 
another hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars on adding additions to this building because I, I see this taking us there. I think that some of the permits we receive might say what the usage is limited to and how many that kind of stuff so we could go back and look at those as well as do some minute searches but i also had a question about and john alluded had said something too where did the idea that the town would give money for this come from and why that was in plainfield that's been out there from the beginning right but i still don't not well, sure as I said in before. as I said in my email response, the yeah. it did come from Plainfield, and the idea is is it would support um, the friends' efforts to promote usage of the building. Uh, I think the bulk of it is um, for the website that the friends of Plainfield Opera House run, and that might also involve some mailings and whatnot. And but, what, but wasn't it like six thousand dollars? That seems like a lot. Yeah, I think that number was just a placeholder. Because we would have to um, add a new line item to the budget and put it on the warning for next year, if we're going to agree to that. Okay. I, I seem to remember conversations, and maybe that's buried in here and I missed it, that this was when it was going to be <clears throat> used for other than town business for like plays and stuff that we were going to get a, a percentage of receipts and that well, this would be see, self sustaining that's, that's what and, i'm coming back to is okay. you, you need to see the general terms and conditions of use as well as the rental agreement a lot of that was developed in response to what the permits allow and what the drb said we could do with the building and how many times a year we could have a play there a lot of that language is in there but you haven't seen that yet okay so, so i think it sounds like we need to see okay. that good cliff thank you cliff i thank you thank you for all the work you're doing on it john thank you for the points you're raising i i'm not sure i would have gone there but um but i hear what i hear and i and i am inclined to agree with everything that you're saying cliff i i think we might be at a point where to, it, it might make sense for somebody else from the friends group to come and present because we're really at a threshold and you've been so involved and you're committed and you're a member of the friends that having somebody who is clearly, clearly on the friend side presenting to us and working with us who's not kind of sitting in the middle um, as we as we navigate these waters for, for all the reasons john's raising we really need to be wearing squarely our select board hats and yeah and i would feel i would feel more like we're we're clearly doing that if we're hearing from somebody who is not also a member of our board and not cliff i hope you take my comment in the spirit that I'm trying, I'm, it's nothing, absolutely nothing personal. It's just that we keep le learning lessons about conflict and how people perceive the work that we do. And that's my thought. Okay. And also one of my last questions was, and I think this is in the rental agreement that this is not strictly to be used only for plays by the blue barn players, but other folks in town or on the other side of town, for instance, that I think there's a group in East Callis, for instance, they would have just as much equal access to the building as uh, the blue barn players. Absolutely. What the what the idea is is the blue barn players. Um, would not necessarily be subject to having to pay the security deposit or put down the security deposit or the booking fees, uh, but they would be subject to the same kind of rental fees and whatnot. Um, other groups that outside of the area that might want to use it um, would be subject to all of those regular agreements. That's all spelled out in the rental agreement. Um, the and that's and that's because the 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 group formerly known as Blue Barn was such a an energy and an impetus for us getting to where we are with the hall. 
exactly and and plus they're providing some they're providing their own equipment to be used by others as well that's exactly. right exactly and also the there's a clause in there that you asked about denise with regards to um, the board of directors of the friends can schedule some events can opt to schedule some events at no charge Mm -hmm. um, what was imagined there is if we wanted to, uh, if someone came to us and said, well, we'd like to have an informational um, session there, uh, maybe a candidate forum or something like that, that in a case like that, we're not obligated to, but we might opt to waive the rental fees mm -hmm. in support of something that works for the public good. Okay, and in, in the spirit of having somebody else or somebody's come to the, the board so it takes you kind of off the hot seat. I'd be interested to know if there's a proposed budget for use of this money they're asking the town taxpayers to provide to support the, the use of, a, of it, not necessarily just for government use, but for other uses. What, what is that money going to be used for? It seems like that's quite a bit of money a year i can go back to the group and say that this is one of the requests the select board has to um, come up with a specific budget of how the monies would be used yep okay so I'm, oh i'm sorry rose go ahead thanks um i just wanted to reiterate what um sharon said a moment ago that you know cliff we really appreciate your long and hard hours working for this town hall and the friends group. I mean, you've done a great job along with them. I know it's many people um, working together. Um, and I, I wanted to reiterate what Sharon said that um, I agree um, with most of the concerns John raised and um, some of the same things that he brought up popped out at me as I was reading through it as well. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I don't think I would object to town wide review of this. Um, you know, it is, it is quite different from the uses that we've had it. And, you know, I, the town taxpayers have invested so much into it. Um, and, you know, I, I have a concern about just opening it up to everybody and, you know, having it be used a lot. Um, it, it's quite historic and it means a lot to all of us. So um, I just wanted to say again, thank you, Cliff, for all your efforts. And um, I think it is time to see someone else here in front of, in front of the select board in the hot seat. So thank you. You're welcome. So it sounds like we can approve the guide uh, policy at this point but not the management agreement. And it does make sense to me that the two, we would look at the two in tandem, the management and the rental. And maybe it's all, maybe the management and rental agreement are all one document. So people don't have to look around for two different documents. So when- Wait, you, what's I two different? What's, to, I think it has man, to, the rental oh, agreement okay. has to be a separate document because- um, oh it's an agreement that the friends enter into with someone who wants to rent the hall. The management okay. agreement defines the relationship between the town and the friends group okay. and delineates authorities to whatever mm -hmm. we agree it's gonna be. Okay, that's fine. That makes sense. Yep. So I'm sorry, we're not gonna be able to approve this tonight. Are you, you're gonna be meeting with the friends on Thursday? No, the th friends group uh, agreed to go on hiatus for the holiday months, but they may opt to convene again now. Okay. Yeah, no, you've put in a tremendous amount of work on this and we're very grateful to you for taking the lead and communicating with the select board so that we get good and accurate information. So thank you. You're yes, welcome. thank you, Cliff. All right. Now to put you back on the hot seat, IT update. Nothing to report. Okay. All right, John, what's going on with, want to give us an update on 
the Center for Vermont Solid Waste Management and the meeting that's on the 29th. Yep, this Thursday, the 29th, uh, there is a what is termed a public informational meeting um, that has been scheduled uh, as a result of the town of Callis, the town of Charleston, the city of Newport, a petition from VPIRG, and I think one other entity filed a request for a public informational meeting, all parties being concerned and interested in learning about how a &R got to where they've gotten in terms of proposing two draft permits called certifications to after the fact allow for the glass as I discussed in our, a previous meeting being landfilled and dumped otherwise dumped glass that we and others intended and paid to have recycled. So that meeting is coming up on Thursday. Uh, the organization I work for, we assist municipalities, frankly, in things like this, uh, Vermont the environment. And this has been an issue that has been uh, a priority for me. Um, it's why I brought to, it to the select board um, and assisted other towns, Charleston, Newport, uh, and actually, oh, it's right, the Northeast Kingdom Solid Waste District. I assisted them in drafting their letters uh, to request this, this meeting. Um, I filed a records request to find out what transpired in the last year to allow a &R to move from the position of, oh my God, I, we can't believe this occurred to, doesn't appear to be a problem. This is, seems to be consistent with the, with the law and the intent um, of the law and uh, to dispose of glass in this fashion. Um, what happened? So I asked for records and using COVID as the excuse, a &R has not been responsive to my records request. And uh, they said they'd get back to me. I wanted to see records so I could you know, delve into them. I could review them and prepare questions and I would also provide you folks a summary. I would have provided you all a summary of what is out there and what has transpired and how they got to where they are. So that everybody in these hearings and this here set of meeting or this one meeting covering two draft permits uh, would have that information as a background. And from there, they could formulate questions to ask of the applicant, Central uh, Chittenden Saw Waste District and of the a &R officials that would be running the meeting. Uh, not received those records. I sent a letter today, email to them, to asking them for the, where are my records? And now time is too short. If there's any kind of volume to these records, I expect there will be a lot of re new records um, and asking them to delay having this meeting until such time as those records are produced. They violated statute. The statute requires them to produce records within 10 days, 10 business days. Um, and unless they're, well, they have to do that. And uh, they have not done that. And they provided me no rationale and have been non-responsive. I, I find it troubling that they're so responsive to applicants who want permits after the fact to bless what they've done. Um, in so John, what, hap what happens with the records thing? <laughs> I'm waiting. I again, I sent an email out today. I'm waiting to hear back. But you know, rush, rush, rush. They they schedule these without having public information. I mean, this is a serious set of uh, policy decisions being made by ANR and by extension the Attorney General's office. And uh, they they tried to rush this through without any public informational meetings. Then when the meetings are requested, and in advance of those meetings, uh, I've done a records request, they've been non-responsive to the records request. I just think it's troublesome, but we will see. Um, that's where that's at. So uh, there's a link that was sent and that Denise set forwarded around. There's uh, an email sent by a gentleman by the name of Ben Gothier. He's worked for a and solid waste program. He's the point guy in scheduling the meetings. There's a link at the bottom to participate it's not a Zoom meeting. It's a different, what do they call this thing? Uh, uh, uh. 
it's kind of similar to Zoom. It's just called yeah, like Yeah, but you got to down you got to just make sure in advance you download the right, uh, right program. Um, let's see. It's called it's a Microsoft program. It's Microsoft Teams meeting. So it's the competitor to Zoom and whatever else is going on out there. So if anybody wants to participate, you might want to download that in advance of the meeting in case you have any snafus um, with that. So that's where that's at. I expect they're just going to forge ahead despite my request, but you never know. Hey, would you would you bring that up at did you you made that records request as many, many or, weeks ago. Yeah, but you made that as you made that as an employee of Vermont just for a clean environment. That's correct. That's correct. And would you bring that up at the hearing? Oh, I am. Yep. So I'm planning to attend this meeting on the 29th. Um, just to hear what's going on because we might need to um, be in communication with some Vermont Solid Waste Management District afterwards, depending on the result of the meeting. Yeah. And I'd like to, before we close this meeting, have a conversation in executive session about Center of Monsaw Waste Management District. Yeah. So yeah, we, I think there's a couple. Folks are so inclined. If we were all tuckered out, then we could do it. As a, as a contractual issue? As a yeah. contractual issue. Yes. Yeah. So it's a, yeah. legal, it's a legal matter. Yeah. Um, there's a couple other things um, to go into executive session about as well, but just wanted to remind everybody that there is election day on November 3rd. And um, I think we're all set. The ladies at the office have done an amazing job. Um, but, you know, they're exhausted. So, Denise, you had mentioned you might want security at the polls. I'm willing to dedicate, and I we all saw Fletcher Dean's email, but... Um, I don't think it's going to be necessary, but I'm, I'm willing to either be on call or just man the polls. In yeah, I mean, if you could be on call, they said that at last I checked with them, I could check with them again, given the recent email that went around from, what's his name? I forget his first name. Dean. No, T-Ball. The document I sent around from T -Ball, oh. uh, Washington County. Yeah. Or, I forget what he's called. But it's after turned. they look at that, they might change their mind. So I'll find out and let you know. Is that the cybersecurity training? No. No, no. no. Different. It okay. was like a six page document of what you do if this happens and what you do if that happens. And I oh, okay, I got it. Attachment. Yeah, it's a we long attachment. Know. I did I did read it. It looks like, you know, they've put a lot of thought into this. But I'll ask them again and let I'm you know, John. I'm not seeing a document attached to what you sent to me, Denise. Is it there, Cliff? I forwarded the email that I got. I can't, Cliff, you're on mute. That's Cliff, what I'm on... saying is that there was no attachment. Oh, okay. I have a stupid Gmail and Katie and I have this problem all the time. Sometimes the stuff attachments go through, sometimes they don't. It drives me nuts. So I will send it again. But take a look at that document, and I'll ask the ladies if they now, after seeing that, would like some presence there throughout the day. To make them feel better, I'm happy to be physically present. I'll just bring my laptop. I can work out of there, whatever is necessary. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we already talked about sort of about policies and ordinances, and Katie's going to put together a draft spreadsheet to help us get organized. That would be great. Um, let's do minutes. Denise, can we do minutes next week so we can go into executive session a little earlier? We can, but there's, I just hate to get behind on the minutes again. There are only two and one of them is just an executive session one. I didn't read them. Oh, you didn't? Am I? <laughs> I <laughs> no, not yet. 
Did anybody else read them besides me? I read them. I had one minor edit. Yeah, if I had just a couple of things. What do you want to do? Do you want to? I can multitask and read them while we have our discussions rather than everybody sit here while I poke through it. And um, Rose, if she hasn't had a chance to. Rose, have you had a chance to look at the minutes from the 12th? Okay, let's do, let's at least do the minutes from the 19th. That should be easy because it's only, it was executive session. I just don't want to get behind again. Yep. So I'm looking at those now. The 19th, you mean? Yeah, my guess is that there wasn't a number four. It's just a numbering issue, right, Katie? Yeah, I think um, Rose actually did these because she was who was there. And when it went from her computer to mine and into here, it just came out sloppy on there. I could format it at all, but it'll just flop back when I um, export it back to the local computer. So instead of having you pay me to do the numbers right, I figure I'll fix them when they come back out, if that's okay. Oh, okay. I just thought there was something missing. But I couldn't figure no, out what it would be. I, I, that. I would have fixed that actually, if I noticed that. I noticed that it did all the weird extra numbers. Um, yeah. It does it in both directions when I put oh, it in. Oh, yeah, you're right. It does it in both directions. That's weird. Yeah. So I would make a motion to approve the minutes of October 19th with Katie fixing the numbering issue. Second. Okay, you ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Sharon? Aye. I'm an aye. Cliff? I think you're on mute. I said aye. Oh, okay, I didn't hear you. John? Aye. Rose? Aye. Alrighty. So, next up, I think there's three different things I'm thinking of. One is personnel related and two legal matters to discuss in personnel in um, executive session. So Katie, if the minutes could reflect both. Yeah. And I guess I'm making that motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. At Rose? 9-11. Yep. Rose? Aye. I'm an aye, Don. Yep. Sharon? Aye. Cliff? Aye. All right. Thank you so the much. The recording Katie. has stopped. Bye, Thank everybody. you. Good night. Good night, Katie. Good night, Katie. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night.